So then guys, Apple have just announced the brand new MacBook Pro with the M5 inside of it and it's going to be released very soon. In fact, I'm also going to be releasing my first product very soon, but that's a story for another day. But a lot of you guys are also wondering though, back to today's video, is how does the M4 MacBook Air compare to the MacBook Pro M5, the two baseline models? Is it worth upgrading to get yourself the Pro model? Model over say the M4 MacBook Air baseline model. Well today we're going to find out by doing a review of specs and with that let's get started. So then guys what we've got we've got the MacBook Pro M5 on the left here with the MacBook Air M4 on the right and that's how it's going to be like then in this comparison. So with that let's get started. Let's look at some key differences at a glance here to begin with. Now, obviously the MacBook Pro with the M5, the title's in the name, the M5 is faster, faster performance here. So obviously, you know, what we have the choice of, we have a 10 core CPU up to that, and then we also have the enhanced CPU and the M4 MacBook Air, well, you have the same thing. You do in the baseline version of the MacBook Air M4, you do actually get a 10 core CPU, but you only get an eight core GPU. Just be aware of that. But just having a look at glance at Geekbench scores, you can see that an even single core multi-core performance the MacBook Pro is ahead but not by a huge huge amount but you also get a bigger display it's a 14.2 inch on the MacBook Pro it's pro motion it's even brighter outdoors at 1600 nits peak brightness compared to 500 nits we do get 16 gigabytes of unified memory on both of these so this is obviously the baseline version we've got the same Wi-Fi technology 16e and Bluetooth 5.3 we've also got the same blue Thunderbolt technology as well. It's Thunderbolt 4, 40 gigabytes transfer here. So that is really, really good, but you do get an extra port. But where the things start to change a bit more is with storage, for example, you get ultra fast storage in the MacBook Pro. It's now claimed to be twice as fast as even the MacBook Pro M4. And remember the MacBook Pro M4 storage was faster than the one you got in the MacBook Air M4. So this is gonna be way faster there. But there again, the good thing about the MacBook Air M4 is that it's definitely thinner and it's far lighter. And then just even looking at the pricing of the difference that we've got right here, we're talking 1,599 US dollars compared to 999 US dollars. Now, you can even pick up the MacBook Air at some places for $200 less than that. You could pick it up for around about $800. So we're talking again, another about $800 difference, $800, $900 difference, depending on deals out there. So this does make a big difference here. But let's dive in deeper then. Let's have a look then to see what we've actually got. So starting out then with the display technology comparison. We have got that larger display of a 14.2 inch on the MacBook Pro M5. This is a liquid retina XDR display where we've just got the standard 13.6 inch LED backlit IPS display. It's an old display technology Apple have been using ever since their first retina displays in MacBooks. So it's the same one there. But the refresh rate is even better here on the MacBook Pro. It's 120 hertz ProMotion. And this is amazing when you actually see it. It's definitely the best ProMotion display I have seen, 120 hertz with mini LED. And that is a difference here, where you've got mini LED in that liquid retina display. Whereas with the MacBook Air M4, it's just a standard 60 hertz, and it's a fixed refresh rate where we could've got adapted with the MacBook Pro M5. Brightness as well is that the sustained brightness. So this is when you're just using it when you want to use the brightness sort of buttons on your keyboard and whatnot. That goes up to a thousand nits. But if you do take it outside, then obviously the sensor on the actual MacBook Pro can actually push this up to 1,600 nits peak on that one. Or even in certain HDR modes as well, it also help with that. Whereas with the MacBook Air M4, it's only a 500 nits. It's just standard brightness. It doesn't get any brighter than that. But then with the color technology, it is very similar, but just do remember we do have XDR also built into the MacBook Pro M5. But moving on from this then, what about performance and processing power? Because there is definitely a big shake up here and a big difference as it were. We do have the same CPU architecture. It is the same 10 core setup. So what we're talking about here is six efficiency cores and four performance cores, identical in the M5 and the M4. But where things do change is in the GPU. If you get the baseline MacBook Air M4 with the lowest amount of storage and the most amount of RAM, 
that will only come with an eight core GPU. Obviously, if you spec it up a bit more, you get the 10 core one. But just having a look at the difference here, you can see that with just the CPU performance, it's 12% faster. And in GPU, it's 36% faster than what we have even with the 10 core GPU, not alone the eight core one. Eight core one will be probably like into 40% or potentially even close to 50% more power there. So that is a big difference. We do have 16 gigabytes unified RAM here, but the memory bandwidth on the M5 is better too. This is how fast those cores can access that RAM to do all those different tasks and send it back and forth. It does it at 153 gigabits per second compared to 120 gigabits a second. And also the newer engine for AI task is faster here than on the M4 and the M5. And having a look here, you can see the Geekbench single core score and the multi-core score, the differences. I would say on paper, it doesn't look that much different, but I'm sure if you're using more and more tasks, then obviously you probably will actually notice that in different apps. But then moving on to this end, to connectivity and wireless technology, what kind of differences do we have here? Well, really, there isn't too much really with how it wirelessly connects. We've still got Wi-Fi 6E on both of these. We've also got the same Bluetooth 5.3. We've also got the same Thunderbolt 4 uh, power, you know, capable. We haven't got Thunderbolt 5 with M5. But what, what I would say is that you do get three time Thunderbolt 4 ports here on the MacBook Pro M5, but only two on the MacBook Air. And do remember, you also get things like HDMI and SD card slot as well. Whereas the MacBook Air, you won't get those slots. Now, both of these devices also do have a MagSafe and also a 3.5 headphone jack too. I know it's just not on the chart for MacBook Pro, I couldn't fit it in. But yeah, it does also come with that too. So really for actually plugging in devices, it is better than the MacBook Pro. It gives you more abilities and more things, but you might not need to use HDMI often. Or you might not need to use HDMI or let's say an SD card slot if you're doing that with your workflow. So the MacBook Air might be better in that way. So then guys, just quickly, I want to tell you about the new channel giveaway we are doing and it is for this right here. It's for a iPhone 17 Pro Max in Cosmic Orange. It's also got 256 gigabytes of storage and it's also got a physical SIM card as well because I know some countries out there, you know, don't take eSIMs just yet. And by the way, that does mean it is an international giveaway that I am doing so anyone can enter in. Now the actual giveaway what we're going to do here is going to be happening in the middle of January 2026 and you can enter in right now. There's only two things you have to do. The first thing is what you can do right now is just put down into the comments below of what technology gear you're hoping to get before the end of 2025 or even early 2026. Put it down into the comments below right now. Now the other thing what you need to do is make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification notification bell because near mid January time I'll be making a video giving you even more details about the giveaway for this iPhone and you won't want to miss out on that video. So like I said make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because more information about this will be coming out around that time. Now the other thing I just want to quickly say to you guys that sadly there are still lots of scammers and spammers out there. People still impersonating me telling to WhatsApp, Telegram, Instagram direct message. Please do ignore these people. Better see right here. Please do report them. So coming back to the chart then, let's have a look then to see at battery and power management, what we've got right here. Now the MacBook Pro M5 does have a bigger battery inside of it compared to the MacBook Air M4. And one of the main reasons behind that, it is a thicker design and it is a heavier machine, whereas the MacBook Air is built to be light and nimble, why it's called the Air, for example. But still, battery life is very good on both of these. Just have a look here. If you did video streaming over Wi-Fi, you'd get 24 hours up to that on the MacBook Pro M5. MacBook Air, you get up to 18, which is still really good. But this is the thing what I'd be saying it's more to want to look at is the wireless web browsing, because this is more likely what you're going to do. You're probably not going to sit and watch movies all the time on your MacBook Pro or your MacBook Air. This is probably a better one to compare at. Browsing the web, doing research, things like this, it's only one hour difference. You get 16 hours compared to 15 hours. It's not a lot. Both of these will get you through a full day. If you went to university or something like this, 
it would be great for your lectures throughout that whole day, working day. So it's gonna be more than enough for you. Also with charging, you don't get a charger now in the box now for the MacBook Pro M5 if you live in Europe, it's a bit weird. But then, you know, the charging capabilities are very unique here. So we can do fast charging here up to 96 watts with the MacBook Pro M5, but you also get a 70 watt charger in the box. That's if you decide to buy that charger or if you're in the US or somewhere else, what well, includes it. But with the MacBook Air M4, well, you only get a 30 watt or 35 watt charger in the box, but it does do fast charging up to 70 watts. But do remember as well that the MacBook Air does have a smaller battery. So really to charge up both these devices, it's probably gonna be about the same up to 100% sort of uh, capability. But for storage speeds, there is a difference here with you know the power management here. We do have faster SSD speeds or NAND chips, whatever you want to call them inside of it, they are far better than what we've got, than what we've got in the MacBook Air M4, if you do need to utilize that. But then after this, in summary, the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. Let's say then, what's the best? The thing is, the MacBook Pro M5 does have the better technology, and I'm going to say that. It's definitely a pro experience here, but the MacBook Air is still more than capable, and it is great. I think the best-selling feature, what I'm really boast about, is how light it really is. It's about one-third lighter than a MacBook Pro M5, and it's really good and it's really capable. So if you're not gonna be pushing it out, if you're just gonna be doing standard writing, typing, researching on the internet and things like this, generally most of the time, the MacBook Airs can be fine. But if most of your workload does mean professional and creative using, then I would say the MacBook Pro M5 is definitely gonna be a better idea for you to get hold of. And you can see here at the bottom, even creative professionals, students and general users, which one is better for each of them. And personally, I do agree with this, which one is the best for your needs. So I think what we have in conclusion here is that the MacBook Pro is definitely a better machine out there, but it does cost $1,700 for it. Whereas the MacBook Air with the M4, especially with Black Friday coming up, you could probably even pick this up for $800. I know Apple sell it for a thousand, but you can get deals elsewhere. And when you see it like that, that's a 900 pound difference. Now, probably this might get dropped down by $50 for Black Friday. So yeah, it said that it might be $850. The point is what I'm gonna get here is that the majority of stuff that you can do on both of these machines is identical. The only one difference I'd say is that if you need that better screen, you're gonna do say media studies at university or college or something like this, this is probably gonna be a better machine for you. If you're just gonna sit at home, go to a cafe or sit things like this, then you know, this this is probably gonna be a better machine, the MacBook Air. This is more for those people who want to do more of those kind of 3D rendering and things like this and have a better display, have better faster storage, have more of the ports available, better battery life. This is what it's for. This one is more designed for people who are just casual users out there. But the other thing I would say is that the M4 MacBook Air can do those same tasks as the MacBook Pro M5, but it might be just a little bit more slower. And then also you might not get that full kind of pro experience out there. So really I would say the choice is yours in what you want to pick here. I don't think you can go wrong either way. But on that note, what do you guys think? Are you gonna get yourself the new MacBook Pro M5 or are you gonna get yourself a MacBook Air with an M4 inside of it? Let me know in the comments below. And on that note as well, guys, it's time to wrap up the video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. As always, you wanna hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell too. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care, bye-bye.